It's the socially distanced Yuletide Lockdown COVID Christmas Concert, featuring Joe Renato on the Style 20 American Photo Player. And now, here's those three magic words. Hit it, Joe! <laughs> and I will do my best to get to them. Here we go.
sleigh ride, huh? Okay, now I'm going to introduce the photo player to you. Okay, for those of you who don't know what a photo player is, this is a photo player. And <clears throat> they were built in the silent film era by the Van Valkenburg brothers of Oakland, California in about 1911 to narrate silent film. If I sound hoarse, it's not COVID-19. It's I was playing with a, a little uh, invention of Tom Edison's with Tom, and uh, we'll have that later. And I'm getting, I was getting hoarse from screaming at it. But anyway, uh, what this machine did is it, it sat down in the orchestra pit. And uh, it was a player piano, and it had a pipe organ and sound effects. So this was the first machine to, to be able to narrate silent films mechanically. Um, what happens is you have two spool boxes. One roll is playing while one is rewinding, so you can constantly cue uh, to keep the film action matching the music. Now, in addition to the rolls, the duplex roll mechanism, you have a set of organ stops and sound effect buttons and pull cords. Some people call these, they used to call them cow pullers, because like milking a cow, you know. <coughs> cow pullers, cow pullers. Uh, and you had bulb horns and all kinds of sound effects. So uh, the piano rolls left the operator's hands free to change the stops, to match the screen action, to change the tempo, and to play the sound effects. For instance, you have a bulb horn. You also have a klaxon. You have a cowbell. Al Al Alice Spike Jones. You have a doorbell. Snare drum. Horses hooves or somebody knocking on the door. Castanets for Spanish films. Tambourine. We have the horn again. And we also have bird whistle. Sleigh bells for sleigh ride. And we have siren. Now, uh, all your other sound effects are, your effects would be the xylophone, which would be in the, and your pipe organ effects, which would be here, which play off the piano keyboard. So you could play the piano, for instance, by hand or by roll, and you can have like the principals, the flute, the violin, the tubas, and then you can also have your bass pipes, your bass register in there. So it was truly a fun thing. All right. So now, before I before I can go on, I would like to wish my closest one of my closest friends. That's right. I want to remember today is Charlie or Chaz D. Simone's birthday. Happy birthday, Chaz! He and I go back to junior high school, and uh, I want to say something as a as a Christmas as a as, excuse me as a, a birthday present to me. Back about 50 years ago, he actually reproduced this logo. I mean, absolutely perfect with gold lettering. So that's Chaz. Thank you very much, and happy birthday. Anyway, uh, now, I'm not sure if you saw the Facebook post last night, but just as I was about to rehearse the photo player, it broke down. If it wasn't for the electrical wizard, Mr. Randy Brake, the concert may never have happened. They call Thomas Edison the wizard of Menlo Park. Well, Randy Brake is the wizard of Montrose Avenue, let me tell you. He and I were rebuilding the uh, vacuum motor brushes this morning uh, for about three hours, and we got, it, we got it running. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so much. So anyway, the next roll is, let's see, we have, um, do we have any questions? Yeah, we do have We do. Questions. We have questions. OK. Uh, we have someone asking if you have any apprentices learning how to play. You know, no. I wish I did. Do you live close by? <laughs> <laughs> we need more young people interested in this because I need to pass, we need to pass this on to the next generation. Now, there is a photo player at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences that uh, Dave Hartman and I restored. Mostly Dave Hartman. I want to do a shout out to Dave Hartman. And oh, yeah. Looking at the camera. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, uh, yes. And we had someone else ask, how did you get this, quote, glorious contraption? Oh, well, to make a long story short, uh, it was in Canada, and they tore down the silent film theater, and they discovered it buried under the stage like King Tut's tomb. So they put an ad in the paper and said, look what we found. Well, this man that lived here in Orange County, he was Canadian. 
he was Canadian, and he flew up there and bought it, and then brought it down, and I think his wife said, if you have that thing in my living room, you're a dead man. So I ended up buying it from him, and then did a restoration, and again, Mr. Dave Hartman uh, showed me how to restore one of these, and it's his genius that has kept this thing running. This restoration is 45 years old. So thank you, Dave. And uh, I just wanted to point out, we have people all over the country and all over the world tuning in tonight. We have people from Singapore and Greece, wow. Seattle, Virginia. Um, one of your old friends, Rob Soar, is one Oh, sure, here. Wow. He, he hi, says Bob. hi. <laughs> you went to elementary school yep, with him? Yeah, all through, all through school together. And you also have audiences young and old. We have a uh, five-year-old Sonny tuning in tonight wow. who says, you're the best player and I love you. Oh my God. Hi, Sonny. Hi. <laughs> Randy Haberkamp at the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences has just chimed in and says, we have an apprentice for you. Oh, you do? Thank you, Randy. This is exciting. I know that um, Ed Torres also was interested. We need, but I, it's good. And the Academy has done wonderful things with that photo player. Uh, they've kept the, the art of the photo player alive. So when COVID-19 is over, I urge you to contact the Academy and find out when there will be shows on their big photo player down there. Okay, on with the show.
was uh, called Silver Sleigh Bells by E.T. Paul, a maniacal man who wrote wonderful marches. Uh, the next piece you heard was Sleigh Ride. And then we had uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and here comes Santa Claus. There's a theme there. And we also had then White Christmas. Well, any other questions? Yeah, so I okay. want to know if you can change any of these things out to play different sound effects. Uh, no, not really. They're kind of uh, dedicated. Uh, the chords and pull chords and everything are kind of dedicated because you have, you know, a chime is a chime. I, did I, I didn't go through all of them, but uh, you have a chime. <laughs> Wind, crash, cymbal, bass drum, tom tom, and gunshot. All right. So, no, everything's kind of dedicated. Uh, yeah. And someone wanted to add or ask, when did you start playing it? Uh, 1974. I've been playing continuously since 74. And when I bought the machine. How many machine. different sound effects are there? Uh, there's about 21. Nice. Mm -hmm. Frosty the Snowman. <laughs>
All right. All right. We got some more questions more here for you, More questions. Joe. Okay. So we have a, question, a couple questions here about the photo player. Uh, <coughs> where was the theater where the, this photo player was All I know, it was in Saskatchewan, Canada. I okay. don't know the name of the theater. I wasn't able to find out the name of it. I wasn't able to find, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to find out the name. Uh, and sadly, Mr. Barnes has passed away, the man that went up there and bought it. And uh, when I thought about doing more research, he had it passed. So um, maybe someday I'll go up to Canada and do some research. And how did you learn how to use the machine? Well, I just kind of fell into it. Uh, my mom was very musical. She could, she could listen to something on the radio and go and play the piano. She never had any lessons. She could play the accordion. Use an accordion and go to prison? No, I'm kidding. Uh, so, vicariously, I, I tried to play the clarinet and I was awful at it. So, I think this is my way of trying to, you know, make up for my inadequacies, inadequacies uh, with music. Um, but there was a man named Frank Maline, and he used to play the machine that's at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences up at the Hoyt Hotel in Portland, Oregon. He was a maniac. And when I was a kid, I went up there and saw him, and he kind of inspired me to carry that forward. So, okay. first of all, where do you get your music roles? Well, you can buy them. You used to be able to buy them from QRS or borrow them from friends. And I want to do a shout out to Elaine Peace. Thank you, Elaine. Elaine has lent us quite a few of these Christmas rolls that are very wonderful. She has a fabulous collection. And uh, thank you, Elaine. Um, you can borrow them from friends, uh, you can buy them on eBay. Uh, they're about, they're around, and sadly, uh, like everything else old, uh, it's falling out of favor, and you can buy them very inexpensively now, if you have a player piano. Uh, someone wanted to know why it's spelled photo with an F. Okay, that's a good question, very good question. Uh, the generic term photo player uh, is P-H-O-T-O, P-L-A-Y-E-R, because these were motion picture players that were built for photo plays, to make music for photo plays, which is spelled P-H-O-T-O. -O. That's how films are registered, photo plays. But the photo player company, being one of the first to create these contraptions, they grabbed the, the name photo player and they put an F on it as their logo. So when you, when you spell photo player with an F, you're only speaking of the American brand of photo player. All other photo players are P-H. Good question. And how hard was it to get this into your house here? It was a bit difficult. Uh, I <laughs> didn't have a door big enough to bring it in, so I knocked a window out and put the French doors in over here to bring it through. It had the, and I hired two piano movers to come in, and uh, they struggled, but they got it in. Okay, here we go. First roll is going to be Oh Holy Night, and then we're going to have Winter Wonderland.
like okay. to thank everybody for bearing with us with all of these technical <laughs> difficulties. Thank uh -oh. you. Uh, we have a few more questions. Sure, here, shoot. So one person wants to know how much PSI the photo player is on. How much? Oh, pressure. Mm -hmm. The uh, organ runs on <clears throat> four and, and a half inches of wind, and the uh, accent. The uh, I guess you want to call it the control vacuum, which controls the organ and the piano runs on 30 inches, which is quite a bit. Most player pianos run on 20, but this has a lot of leaks and a lot of valves. And we have another couple questions. What okay. are all the pedals for? The pedals are, I didn't get to finish that, I'm sorry. The pedals, the first one is a siren. You, have a nice siren. Now, you also have a reissue of the snare drum and a bass and cymbal. Uh, so if you're playing by hand, you can do the track. And if your hands are busy, uh, too busy, you can uh, also accentuate with the pedals. And then the last one is thunder or timpani. We had another question of uh, what organ stops are on the photo player. Okay, what organ stops? Good question. Um, the first one, uh, well, we have a 16-foot flute, which is a wooden pipe, and then we have an 8-foot principal, which is a metal pipe, and uh, that's your base. Re that's your base register. Hand these on. That gives you a good base. And on the treble side, we have a treble principal, two foot. We have a two foot flute and a two foot violin. And to give it a fatter sound, we have a four foot tuba, which is this sound here, in the two foot octave. Whoops. So that's a reed. Photo player didn't, couldn't unify organs like church organs, you know, the electric, electrical controls. So they just put pipes in different octaves to make the sound fatter and bigger. They cheated. And we have another question. Sure. How different is it playing the photo player versus playing a regular organ? Oh, well, <clears throat> I guess playing a regular organ, uh, this is basically a piano keyboard. So if you're a pianist, you could play, you could play a photo player fairly easily. Uh, of course, as you know, pipe organs, have second touch, their theater organs and church organs have a different touch, and their keyboards are an 88 note, they're a smaller keyboard. So um, the technique is the same. Most organists can make the transition to piano and pianists can make the transition to organ, but uh, it takes a little, little practice and a good musician. So yeah, it's the same thing. These were designed so you could play it by hand if you wanted to, and be cheap about it and buy piano rolls for 10 cents each and have free cheap music for your theater. How often do you play, Joe? About once a week to keep it going. You know, like any contraption, you have to keep it moving, parts moving and, and alive, or it uh, things get stiff and stiff and bad. <laughs> and then we have one more question sure. here. Someone wanted to know, have you learned more about what became of the inventors, the Van Valkenburg brothers? The Van Valkenburg brothers, I did contact, I found the family, um, the descendants, very nice people. Um, there's not a lot of history about the Van Valkenburgs. They were, the brothers were in, the brothers were inventors. And they decided to come up with this machine uh, because they had a piano shop that they started in 1910. And after that, they started manufacturing photo players in Oakland and a salesman decided, Mr. Werner said, I'm your salesman. If my sales exceed the factory output, can I buy the company from you? And they said, sure, and that's what happened. They stayed on as president and vice president, I believe, but uh, anyway, uh, they disappeared into history and we really don't know what happened to them, sadly. And we have one last question here. Uh -huh. What is the most widely known use of the photo player in the modern day, if not your music? It would have to be this machine on the internet. <laughs> There's no other really photo player being used publicly or online that I know of in, in this fashion. Except the academy. And then the academy, yeah. The academy photo player, of course, uh, is, like I said before, it's the only one American photo player in the public venue. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's becoming quite a famous photo player. So now it's time for some more music. Okay, here we go. Silver, silver bells, are you ready?
soldiers. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, now we've got a special treat for you. So over here, oh, I forgot. You may remember this from last year. My friend Thomas Edison is one of his little contraptions here. This is an 1878 tinfoil phonograph, and he and I were playing with it earlier today, and that's why I got hoarse, because as Edison said, you have to speak from the diaphragm to the diaphragm, and uh, I guess he made a recording for us. Uh, he didn't tell me what it was, so let's, let's see what Tom Edison has to say for us here. So as we close the gate, okay. Okay, Tom, it's all yours. Let's let the clock do its thing. <laughs> Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, Tom. Oh, well. Okay, Tom. Very good. <laughs> Sounds like he was a little horse, too. Like now. Pony. Or a pony. Yeah. Okay, now. <clears throat> we go over here. This is a 1912 Powers motion picture machine. And I'm going to show you how it works. This is a, you saw a little small crank. Now you're going to see something with a large crank. So this Powers uh, was it, what would have been used in the silent film theaters of the era. It is a contemporary of the photo player. Don't worry, Jingle Bells is where it belongs. Just keeping my producer on, on his toes. So what you do is you would hand thread this by bringing the film forward till you see the start mark. Remember in the silent film days, they didn't have Academy Leader. You know that countdown? Um, but I spliced some on just to cheat. Um, they just had a start mark because there was no sound to see. Now, once you thread the film up, um, you're going to take up here and you check the loop to make sure everything looks good and you want to make sure your lower latham loop is, is good and this, you don't want to scratch the film, you're very careful. Okay, there we go, looks good now. And let's make sure we're getting our sink right, it looks good, very good. And I should say you also clean the gate with this, this, this is all you take a, don't tell the U.S. men, you take a penny and you grind it down and it's softer than the gate and you can scrape it. So that's what the old projectionist did. I just have to do that. Okay, now. Hey, Joe. Yes, hi. At our last concert, someone asked what your favorite movie was to narrate and you said Laurel and Hardy's Big Business. That is correct. What's in that film can down there? Well, you know, it's funny. This film says Big Business on it. Hmm, gee. We have a contemporary projector and a contemporary photo player. I think we should do a Christmas film for the people. What do you think? I think that's a great and idea. Who can better bring, who can better bring a, uh, a a cheerful, happy Christmas story to the general public other than Laurel and Hardy selling Christmas trees, and uh, you'll see how they go about it. All right, Mr. Gibson is going to crank for us. And I'm going to walk over to the photo player and attempt to create a score. So remember, this is off the cuff, guys. Here we go. So I made a cue sheet. So what you do is, what the operator would do is he would look at the film, and then he would go down to the uh, library, a roll library in the theater, and he would uh, he would draw up roles that were appropriate uh, to the uh, to the film, and then he'd use it with a stopwatch or whatever, and he'd time the scenes in the film, and then time the roles out. So in this case, we have we're going to start out with Jingle Bells. That's appropriate, and then we're going to use a film music role called the Hobbledy Boy for the next scene. And that is right here. Boy, it's hard to see here. I'm going to turn the light up for you a little bit. Uh, and then we have Hunk of Tin, which is the next one. That's a film music role. Thank you. We can turn back down a minute here. 
And then we have outsteppen, which is a great role. Uh, it's not a film music role, but it's an appropriate role for what's going to happen. Then we have another film music role called the roundup. And then we have take, okay, I'm not going to tell you that one because that's going to be a surprise. And then we have fluffy ruffles, whatever that is. That's a film music picture role. And then hearts and flowers. All right, so here we go. So what the operator would do is he'd line the rolls up. And you'll notice, and you won't notice, but if you could see the rolls, the label is correct on this way when it's on the shelf. When you put it on the piano, it's upside down. They have two labels on there. So I can read the labels upside down and see what the, what the music is as we go along. So we queue up the first roll, and a lot of times what they would do is they would put the, uh, the tempo on here. They'd write the tempo on with a fountain pen, and then here, we have the next one, and we get the next roll queued up, okay? All right, there we go, and then I think we're ready to roll here. Okay, so with a 1912 Powers hand crank motion picture machine and an American photo player, we're going to attempt to do a Christmas film for you that will put you in the spirit of Christmas. As only Laurel and Hardy can. All right, I think we are ready.
Thank mm-hmm. you.